He's revealed everything that we would need to know or not so that we would be able to live a life of victory. And in the book of Revelations, the last book of the Bible, the most important concluding book which tells us what will happen to this earth, what will happen to all those who dwell on this earth, what will happen in the end. Everything is clearly written here so that we would know and not be confused. He starts by speaking to his churches and this reveals all the things that can take place in a church. So we who are of his church, of his body, need to see it then. Check to see that none of these that he says is wrong and missing should be found in us, but only those things which he expects and tells these churches to do, we need to do ourselves. So he writes to these seven churches and almost all of them receive certain corrections that they need to take up and do with certain churches. He's really upset about the way that they've been functioning and handling, but to some churches he's really happy with the things that are taking place. He starts with the church at Ephesus and then he tells that he knows about their works, their labor, their patience in Revelation chapter 2 onwards. You can see this. Though he says that they have labored hard and good, he's saying, nevertheless I have this against you that they have left your first love. So that's why we sing this song as often as we can. And more than a song, we need to remember that we need to love God and have that love with which we approach Jesus Christ on that day in which we started following him. Salvation is not just repeating a prayer of repentance. It is about you being touched by the power of God that you know the truth and when you know the truth and you get to know all that Jesus has done it touches your heart when you know the love of God it really makes you fall in love with him because he has loved you with such great love a love which can never be found on earth among human beings for the love of God is from heaven it is divine it is supernatural, a love that loves us. That even when we sin and even when we did not know him, God is patient and good and kind and waiting like the loving father who waited for that son who left the house to return back. And when he came, he didn't question, he didn't admonish him, he didn't say anything negative. He just ran and hugged him and prepared a feast for him and put a robe over him and a ring on his finger and he was just happy that he who had been lost is now returned back to the house. That's how the love of God is and Jesus is telling this church that they've forgotten to love God and they lost the love that they had. Being tender hearted being a person who has a heart beating and not a heart which is hardened by the effects of the things of the world. The devil will always come in and send in people to try to make your heart hard. You've got to be wise as serpents on the earth, but when it comes to the Lord and the things of the Lord, you must be gentle and tender, ever open with your ears to listen to his voice. Your heart should quiver with love for him at all times. So you've got to protect your heart as you are in the world and keep the love that is there inside and show it to the world. Love even the enemies who hate you. And without love, this way, this faith, all that we do in the name of God would be in vain. Love makes the difference. 
it is not a religion that jesus came from heaven to earth to start he came to show the love of god and without love we would be just like any of the other man made dead religions of the world with all kinds of requirements and all kinds of customs and traditions but at the heart of it all is emptiness and darkness the heart of it all is misery and pain but in the heart of following jesus christ is a true pure love you need to have that love in your life you got to ensure that each and every day that you have that love for your lord the love with which you started following him and jesus is telling this church and he's telling us at all times to check to see that we as a church have that love that tender pure true love that we do not become a group of people who just do religious things that we just come at the specific times and just go through the motions just finish what we need to do and it's not an obligation it is not just a custom that we are following it is not a ritual we come here because we have the love for god and we need to always keep it and the second church that he writes to here is smyrna and they are enduring difficulty and hardship and he is telling them that he will give them the crown of life and that they've got to be faithful until death and the third church is writing to church is writing to the pergam moss and to them he is telling about how terrible things have taken place in their midst and they've allowed the doctrine of balaam a stumbling block has been put there and they've not understood the service of the lord they've gone after gain and after things of the world and have left following the lord there isn't time to look at that because i want to look at a specific church this morning but before that we come across in chapter 2 verse 18 the church of tyatira and there he is telling them about how as for your works the last are more than the first but nevertheless i have a few things against you and so he's telling the things that they need to fix and rectify in their midst and then after speaking to them then he comes down and then we can see in chapter 3 that he's writing to the angel of the church in sardis and he speaks to them and even to them he tells i know your works and to them he says you think and you have a name that you're alive but you are dead he saying be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die they've almost reached the point of spiritual death but they had a name they've been there for some time and the things that had once taken place there is still known by the people around and with that name that is there they're continuing but right now when jesus looks at them he does not see the things that they started with he sees that they are spiritually almost going to cut off from him and he's even telling them in verse 5 in chapter 3 that he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments and i will not blot out his name from the book of life therefore it means that here to this church that the way things have been taking place there that some of them would almost lose their names that were once written in the book of life god wrote it but now the way they're living he would have definitely been patient with them and waited for them to turn around that is why he's speaking but if now even after this counsel even after this final last warning if they do not turn to living right then god has no other hope but to remove their names from the book of life but one of the churches which he speaks everything positive the church that any church should be like is the church of philadelphia in chapter 3 verse 7 in the book of revelation 
want you all to turn there and we can read that but before that we can see another church which also re receives one of the most stern warnings of the Lord Jesus Christ the church of the Laodiceans and to them he's saying I know your works that they're neither cold nor hot they've come to a point where they're very lukewarm they've lost their fire and their passion and they're right now about to be expelled from the body of Christ he's saying if you are on fire then you'll continue to be there otherwise he's saying in verse 16 I will vomit you out of my mouth they're completely unacceptable to the Lord he cannot have them as part of his body in fact he's standing outside this church it's shocking they're there but he's standing outside and so he's telling them in verse 20 behold I stand at the door and knock and then he's saying if anyone hears my voice he's talking to the whole church does anyone in this church hear my voice I'm standing outside the church and I'm knocking but no one is bothered they've completely left Christ aside they've got things in which they like which they want to do and which they are following that God has no place no room there the presence of God nothing that Jesus expects is there they've gone to that terrible state where Jesus is standing out and they've locked him the door is shut it's not like the door is open that he could walk in and try to do something it's almost like they've denied him and saying we have nothing to do with the Lord he has nothing to do with us they would have made those statements when they were there in the world with the others and they would have allowed in such darkness to enter in that God is locked outside that he's standing outside and he's saying I'm knocking open the door there isn't time to look at all these negative things we one day need to do that so that we will ensure that everything here is taken by us with a good mind and with a good heart to ensure that we do not even start on that path does not mean that any of these things are taking place it means that as a precautionary measure that when we read it then we have this knowledge given to us by Jesus Christ that these are the things that can take place in a church that the God of the church can be kept out that lukewarmness can come in that there can be a form of liveliness a form of energy and a form of conduct that the world might think that definitely they're on the right path but like to the church that he writes in Sardis saying you are dead but the others think that you're alive so we, all these are the pitfalls that can take place does not mean that we have it but we read it so that we can ensure that even as the enemy tries to sneak in and try to start something all of this evil and all of this darkness all of this falling away all of this backsliding all of it starts in a very innocent fashion an innocent manner just a seed just a thought all that needs to be sown in just a thought starting in someone's mind and it goes on and goes on and then they tell the others and it could happen anywhere inside the body of Christ it can happen from anybody who is there and it can influence the entire church you see when Jesus walked into synagogues just one person was enough to control it was not the Holy Spirit that was leading there's just one man sitting there and he spoke out saying what are we to do with you Jesus leave us alone that was the time that he chose to open his mouth and speak but before that though he did not open his mouth and speak that one person was enough to influence and change the spiritual atmosphere that the presence of God the Holy Spirit cannot come in and there are few who will be able to realize and see that this is something that happens in the spiritual realm you might not know but if you go to minister somewhere go to certain places and you can feel the darkness and evil that is trying to come and shut the mouth of those who preach so much so that it is wanting to stop you certain things that you want to say all those things are try to be stopped by these spirits that can just operate from one person who can just be sitting there quietly but 
the things in the spirit realm are completely different in the physical realm you are sitting in one place and you are limited to maybe two square foot and that's about it but in the spirit realm the spirit of that person can influence the entire place that they are in based on what is inside of them so we've got to be cautious and careful that is what jesus is saying here and sometimes just because of one person the flow and the spirit of god would not move that's why the early church the apostle asked the church saying pray that you preach the gospel with boldness because those evil spirits operate through just one person no one would notice even they might not know that they themselves would be deceived they would have just received they would have just got into that trap and they would have just been used as a conduit as a channel for darkness to flow in and influence the entire region place church wherever they are they could even be doing it in their house in their neighborhood in their workplace anywhere that's why they say pray for us that he'll preach the word with boldness because only the spiritual boldness of the holy spirit will make the preacher open the mouth and say the things that are needed that'll give the breakthrough that'll reveal the truth it is like when the mouth is open and certain words are said the light shines the darkness is expelled the yoke is broken the chains are broken the enemy does not want that that person might be just sitting there but they have a spirit of resistance a spirit of anarchy a spirit of opposition that will be threatening those who stand to share the word of god it could even threaten each and any one of you you would come to the house of god you would go somewhere and you want to do some good and then you're just some completely limited it would be in a region it could be among the relatives in your family you want to do good you want to say good but something stops you and if you want to overcome that you cannot do it with your power of your mind or you cannot do it with your physical strength you've got to have the boldness which only the holy spirit gives amen so that breakthrough comes to the holy spirit and that's why jesus is revealing all that to the church so that we would not be put in a trap but let us look at this wonderful church that he's speaking everything positive about this wonderful church that he's telling good things about there are seven requirements seven things that he encourages them to continue in and this church reveals to us there are seven things that they've done right that jesus is revealing to them in this place and because they're doing the seven things right jesus is promising he is giving them the assurance that they'll receive seven things so these seven requirements that any church need to have will ensure and give them seven things in their life on earth and in the life to come after that so let us read the book of revelation chapter 3 verse 7 onwards all of us you can turn your bibles and see from verse 7 where it says to the angel of the church in philadelphia write these things says he who is holy he who is true he who has the key of david he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens i know your works see i have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have a little strength have kept my word and have not denied my name indeed i will make those of the synagogue of satan who say they are jews and are not but lie indeed i will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that i have loved you because you have kept my command to persevere i also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on earth behold i am coming quickly hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown he who overcomes i will make him a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go out no more i will write on him the name of my god and the name of the city of my god the new jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my god and i will write on him my new name then he concludes by saying in verse 13 he who has a year let him hear what the spirit says to the churches he is very pleased with this church and he's giving his message to them he doesn't say oh they're going on the right path 
just let them continue he is encouraging them he's telling them the things that they're doing right and the things that he would do it's a word of encouragement it is a promise given to them the seven promises that he gives to this wonderful church that is there let us first look at the requirement let us first look at the positive things and the good things that touch the heart of God that Jesus found to be important that he mentions in this church so that we as a church would keep it it means that each and every one of you also keep it and when each and every one of you in the church keep it then each and every one of you get that same assurance together as a body of Christ and individually each and every one of you will get this for you the first thing that I want to see here is in chapter 3 verse 8 he says I've set before you an open door no one can shut it for you have a little strength I've kept my word they kept the word of God we lived 2,000 years after Jesus walked on this earth they lived at this time when this book of Revelation was written by the youngest apostle who Jesus revealed himself to had lived and he would have been 90 years old at that time so nearly 70 years or so would have passed minimum approximately after the Jesus walked on earth and then he ascended into heaven in a cloud from Mount of Olives so all the other apostles who walked and lived with Jesus are no more they were all martyred they went to many places on earth but here John is one of the last ones and even the generation of people which saw Jesus Christ in flesh and blood are all passing out from this life to the next and at this time there could be an open door for the enemy to come in and bring in vain doctrines useless doctrines things which can confuse the people they can focus on certain things which are not important even now if you look at the entire church that is there on all the earth you can see the various ways in which the worship is done the various ways in which importance is given to different things right from having statues which are worshipped to all kinds of customs and traditions that are adopted based on the culture of the land that that church is placed in adopting the things that are there to please the people who are there so that it would not be a total outright opposition saying this is the truth Jesus is the way the truth and the life there is no other way that is very offensive when you walk into a new place and say all the things that you've been following and doing your religion is not going to take you to heaven there's only one way throw away the idols and you can't just give it to someone else you've got to break it down all these things are not proceeded from God there is only one who came from heaven to earth the truth is offensive that's why Jesus says repeatedly are you offended because of me but truth is hard and because of that those who do not have the boldness of the Holy Spirit will not be able to stand there and oppose that evil spirit that is working there through various means and people and subdue it and say this is the truth all you evil spirits have been working here in this land till now get out I give you eviction notice this land now belongs to Jesus Christ and fight it just like how Apostle Paul fought he fought and cast them out the power that was there in that region lost it and he brought in the power of the Holy Spirit and then he revealed the truth to them there are so many instances time and time again when he went to place after place you can see one instance in Acts chapter 16 verse 16 it says now it happened as we went to prayer a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination so she's coming here to this region you see where it is it is there in chapter 16 verse 14 it tells about a woman named Lydia who was a businesswoman of Tyatara so she persuades them to stay there in Tyatara and in that place Paul is trying to minister but as he's trying to spread the gospel and the word of God there is an evil spirit that is operating through a girl who is there a spirit of divination a spirit of soothsaying and 
she meets up with them this evil spirit she finds the evil spirit leads her to come and find paul in that big city you would have seen i don't know if you've gone to any gospel healing miracle crusades you conduct the crusade and anywhere these evil spirits will drive the people who are bound by it they just get driven there they come and fall in front of the stage and they are there trying to manifest and trying to affect but only the power of god can remove them and god has power over every power of darkness have no doubt about it so here this slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination meets up because she was the one who was giving profit by fortune telling by fortune telling be careful of what you read anywhere or go to anyone or even allow anyone to speak to you they'll just walk in and they'll say i'll tell you something even for fun listening to it can be dangerous because words transmit evil spirits you receive a word you can receive it not everybody has the power and the revelation do not have the discernment to know when at what point that interaction took place you can be brought under the power of something which you do not want so here this girl who has a spirit of fortune telling followed paul and cried out so wherever paul is going she is following and disturbing the ministry she is influencing the atmosphere the region and the people who are there she's been a disturbance wherever he's trying to preach the gospel or he's trying to speak to people she is just following him and being a disruption there what does she say it says she cried out saying these men are the servants of the most high god who proclaim to us the way of salvation though it sounds very positive but still we do not want any evil spirit standing there and being the one talking paul allowed it for some time it says in verse 18 and this she did for many days following wherever even in the night came she didn't go back and stop coming the next day no the again followed and followed because it is a case of the spirit which controlled that entire region all of them there were under that spell and under that dominion of that spirit and it knew that as long as it was disrupting the ministry of paul it would continue to be there it had known that it is losing its hold there and final encounter the final battle will take place it happens now that as he did this for many days finally paul greatly annoyed turned and said to the spirit i command you in the name of jesus christ to come out of her and he came out that very hour so now everything is stopped now the whole situation changes you can see what happens in that place those who owned her their ma- her masters are now really angry because now they're not going to be able to get any profit she will not be able to tell any fortune telling to anybody who comes there she will not be able to have control paul had cast it out and because of that what happened they took paul and silas and beat them and put them in prison and there isn't time to read all that and they locked them down see the opposition that is stirred up it's a fight it's a battle going on for that city for that region that is there they beat him they locked him put him in stocks and he was there locked up in the inner cell but we know what happened oh there isn't i didn't want to go there that's another wonderful beautiful instance in which god delivered them and there was a breakthrough there amen the truth of god the gospel was preached with power and the manifestation of the holy spirit was seen in that place so that's what i'm saying when the work of god and the church of jesus christ is established by jesus christ the evil spirits that are there in that region in that city in that state in that country will try to come and subdue it control it limit it oh they will try to come and switch it off they'll try to come and remove the power make it a powerless church it can be a dead religion that just goes on doing lot of things that can be even a lot of people that can be all things which will look very religious have a name all over the world but jesus when he sees it he will know whether they're truly in connection with him or not or whether they're going to make it in the life after or not imagine that name is written in the lamb's book of life and then it is erased everyone in the church they're about to die and they're not going to make it to heaven how terrible that is isn't that what we saw but here we have to know that for all those things to not take place we need to 
keep the word that is why jesus is saying you have kept my word among all the things that are there there are many who will say oh they are doing this there and they are doing this here and these group of christians are doing that we should follow that that church is doing that we should follow that we do not have to follow all that there's nothing wrong maybe god truly is working and maybe we can do it but it should not be that it should be the holy spirit leading us and it should be based on the word of god that's a focus that god is keeping them in you have kept my word not the word of other people because you see the other churches that are there they have the evil spirit of jezebel and balaam working there they are the ones who are teaching and they are the ones influencing and they have made the whole church take another different direction so all these things can take place wolves coming in sheep clothing all kinds of liars and all kinds of people who creep in but when we look at the word of god and keep it we will not be shaken that's why we give importance to the word of god so we as a church need to know the word to even keep it that is why we started reading the book of matthew and we continued over mark and luke and now we are in gospel according to john i do not know whether we'll have any time to read it that as a church we can read it till at least the book of revelation and then maybe maybe one day we can read the entire bible the whole old testament maybe we'll increase the time of the service go up for fellowship and have the breakfast come back down at 12:30 and then continue you go on till evening 5 o'clock then we can definitely do all of that some of you are very smiling some of you are wondering what is this going to happen isn't this the day of the lord today evening at 5 o'clock what are we going to do thank you very much so all of those who know it please be there come do not miss because we are keeping the word of god by praying for the people of this city the word is the most important thing heaven and earth will pass away but his words will never pass away we should base the church you should base your life on the word of god every important thing that you do every part of your life you start with the most important things of your life the important choices you make oh right from the job to the marriage to everything else is it based on the word of god write down as you follow the lord jesus christ you will slowly incorporate and make your life completely in alignment with the word of god where you can say that every thing that i do throughout the day my thought life my words my actions oh everything that i say and do is all based on the word of god because god has told this i will adopt it because god had said that you should not do this i will remove it so reading the word of god looking at it like as if we look at it in a mirror and fixing ourselves we got to constantly look at the word of god and align ourselves individually and as a church keeping the word is the most important thing it is following the teachings of god obeying what jesus has said that is what jesus is looking at again he says in verse 10 to them because you have kept my command he's saying because you have kept he's pleased with that so that is the most important thing that we need to do as a church and the second thing is they have not denied christ jesus the same verse 8 they have not denied saying we are not the followers of christ when they were under pressure and in different places because we right now live in a time when there is oh unity among the religions oh all ways lead to one god there are many ways but one god all those kinds of confusion can come in and oh they can pull you in and say come on for peace you should just join with us it might look all right we are not opposing anybody everyone we love with the love of god but you got to be clear that we are sending the right message there is one truth amen because when you accept some people and say okay oh i'll come and sit with you and you have your way i have my way you're ensuring that they definitely go to hell because they'll go back saying i think my way is also right he's agreed to that and as they continue in that day one way one day they'll find that they've not made it to heaven so you've got to be able to stand up 
and say I follow Jesus Christ I do not follow anyone else or anything else there are all kinds of people who will come and say all kinds of things there's one man who was there studying with me who said do you know Jesus came to India I said oh wow <laughs> and he said all the things I don't want to tell any of those things to you so you've got to be really clear and you've got to be able to tell otherwise they can really deceive you and confuse you and they can take you away from the truth you've got to look at the word of God and you'll be definitely able to see that he did not leave even when the Greeks came and invited him he was not willing to follow them definitely he did not come here there are all kinds of confusions the devil is a liar he can start a lie even today he can start another lie tomorrow he can build stories he's a storyteller it's not difficult to write a novel you can just build your own world you just have to let your imaginations run wild you've got to base your life on the truth so do not let your imagination or anyone's imagination take hold of you he's telling them you have not denied my name that is the important thing that he's noting there in this church he notices and sees that they are not afraid to speak the name of Jesus that is what one of the versions the English uh, easy to read version says you are not afraid to speak my name because we live in a time where people do not want to even mention the name of Jesus they can say a prayer and the end and say in the name of God amen then that is very general where are you addressing your prayer you can pray a beautiful eloquent prayer and then you have to close it in Jesus name I ask amen that is what directs it to Jesus that is what will get heaven working on your behalf not any other name but if you are in a very mixed crowd people with many different philosophies and religions and you do not have the boldness of the Holy Spirit you go there and they those evil spirits which are there will know this person he is going to come and mention the name of Jesus and as you stand there and as they tell you oh you pray we know that you go to church why don't you say a prayer and as you pray in the end you don't want to offend anyone and say in the name of all that is good amen then everything is gone you've denied the Lord Jesus Christ you will feel that spirit coming and trying to stop you from saying the name of Jesus because even when you just say it at the conclusion at the end of that prayer saying in Jesus name amen that name can do wonders on the life of the people who are there at that time and it can do wonders later when they are at home many years later because you planted that seed that which they heard the Holy Spirit will remind them at that most crucial hour when they are standing before life and death and they are about to lose their life to hell the Holy Spirit will remember tell them remember that name call on that name he prayed that impression will come and touch and that can change and that can save them I can tell of testimonies of people who are just there in the forest and going to be struck by a poisonous king cobra he was Rabbi he was a son of a Hindu saint who was there in Trinidad and Tobago and you can even get his book and read it he was a small boy he was there no one else was there but at that time as he was just there about to die he who completely never used the name of Jesus suddenly it came to his mind because one of his aunt had spoken about it and at that time he used the name of Jesus and he writes saying immediately the snake which was about to strike me I would have died there it's a king cobra it just went back away that changed his life he now preaches the gospel there are many people like that so use the name of Jesus that is what he's saying I've not denied my name you've been faithful to me oh we don't say you have to wear a wedding band a ring if you want you can wear it there's nothing wrong with it more than my dad used to say more than putting a chain around the neck or putting a ring in your finger if there is a true bond of love in your heart then you don't need all these external things to keep your heart and your mind and you true it cannot be some people who wear a wedding ring and then go to some places and then put it in the pocket and then after that wear it and come back home then all those tricks as unfaithfulness that's how some people are like put the name of Jesus carry the Bible wear some religious clothes and come on a Sunday morning and then after that throw it all away Monday Tuesday till Saturday do whatever else it's not going to help 
Jesus sees it all. He's saying, you've been faithful to me. Have not denied my name. To this church and third is you have endured patiently. He says in verse 10, chapter 3, book of Revelation, because you have kept my command to persevere. That is one of the most important things in the Christian walk. Why don't we all say the word persevere? It means to endure patiently. I want you all to say that word, endure patiently. You have to continue. You just have to continue. You just have to stand there. There can be a storm. There can be lightnings and thunder. There can be the whole world in chaos. But you just have to just hold on and just close your eyes. Sometimes you might not be able to answer questions that people ask you. Remember Job, how he just was there. He just held on. He just continued in the Lord being faithful to him. When he could not answer questions because the devil will send people. They'll come and say, why are you still doing this why are you still following the Lord they'll make you make statements without faith and once you make a statement without faith then the enemy will hold that and use that to twist your life you can even close your eyes close your ears and just be like an armadillo just crawl up and just be there the storm which came the storm will pass away no storm lasts forever and you've got to know the enemy took the form of a serpent in the garden of Eden because it showed who he is. What the enemy lacks and the kingdom of darkness lacks is endurance. Because the enemy, the serpent is a cold-blooded animal. You are a warm-blooded animal. You, not an animal, sorry, you are a warm-blooded creation of God. You know how to have your blood warmed up. But the serpent and all those cold-blooded animals need the sun to keep warm. That is why they cannot endure. Those which are cold-blooded will die if you put under stress for a long time. You can catch a crocodile which is 15 feet long and very powerful. It can go on a death roll and kill anybody. It can bring down a buffalo. It can even bring down a lion and it can fight against a hippopotamus and it can grab the legs of an elephant which tries to get into the water. But if you capture it, the people who capture it do not transport it to a long distance. Because they know in the transportation under the stress of just being transported and put in that cage, it will die before it reaches. Why? Because it is cold blooded. It needs to regulate its body temperature because it has no capacity to regulate it on its own. So endurance will keep you through. Oh, the enemy can come and he can do things. But even as he's dancing around, walking around like... A roaring lion, you just have to stand put and just watch. Let him dance around, let him roar around. You just stay there, you just be there following the Lord. Very soon he loses strength. He loses energy. You who endure, all of you follow the Lord will make it to heaven. The devil is not going to endure forever. Very soon he's going to oh, be bound for a thousand years. Oh, with a chain and cast into that bottomless pit and after that release for a while and then he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. He does not endure forever. His end is written and given. You will live forever and ever. Rule and reign with Christ Jesus. Oh, that is your DNA. That is how God has created you. Everlasting life. It will bubble out of you. The Holy Spirit can revive you even when others think that you're dead because you're following the Lord Jesus Christ who was crucified, who lost all his blood, his body was torn, his heart was pierced. But three days later, without anyone coming and praying over him, he rose up himself with his own power. Amen. So just continue. They can do all kinds of things. They can put you in a tomb. They can wrap you up and seal you and set guard around you. But at the set time, at the set time, as you continue in the Lord and not deny His name, you will definitely receive the reward for your suffering. James 1.12 said, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, so that is why the temptation sometimes might be allowed, not at all times. James 1.12 says, Blessed, look at that. James 1.12 Blessed is a man who endures temptation for when he has been approved. So he's put through a trial. The devil is allowed to come and cause temptation in the life. Trying to drag him away from the truth, away from the Lord with his tricks. 
suddenly you might feel oh being bombarded with certain things certain thoughts saying come here go there do this and you might be wondering what is this overtaking me what is all the time surrounding me the people coming and trying to pester you saying come do this do this do this but if you just endure there will be a time when god will step and say enough you tried your tricks now can you see now that he is faithful to me now he's passed the test i'm going to promote him take it to a higher level more blessing for you that's why it says james 1:12 blessed is the man who endures temptations for when he has been approved he will receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to those who love him the easy to read version of the bible says who are tempted and remain faithful the contemporary english version of the bible says god will bless you if you don't give up when your faith is being tested if you don't give up do not give up shake someone sitting next to you behind you in front of you and tell them do not give up don't give up that is what is enduring not giving up you know the truth each and every one of you know it because you have faith only who come got up out of your house and come here this morning all of you have faith all of you know the truth that is why you come just hold on not every one of you might be able to preach a message and say seven reasons as to why you're following the lord to the people ask you questions among your family or among your relatives you don't have to be able to answer for the walk you're walking in the lord you're following you just smile if you want to even if you're not able to smile just close your eyes as they bombard you with questions and put you under pressure um, take you through various trials and all kinds of difficulty it'll all pass away they lose their energy you will endure hallelujah the next thing you can see here jesus is saying behold i am coming quickly know that revelation 3 was 11 he's saying that and because he's coming quickly hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown hold tight to the faith do not let go of it keep safe what you have hold on to it do not let anyone steal it away from you that no one may take your crown it is like as if jesus has already given it to them and they're wearing it though it will be given finally in the end but it has already been he's prepared it he's kept it there it is like the house that is built and your name has been written on it and everything has been made so that you can enter in it just a matter of time before you step in and take possession of it it is for you it is like there are many crowns that are there in heaven and it all has a name if someone comes and tries to touch your crown jesus will say no that is not your crown that belongs to titus leave it you get your own crown or he'll say what oh no that is gibson's crown this is he's got he's got your head measurement i'm sure so he'll be like put a tape i don't know you must have been sleeping when the angels came and put a measuring tape and see how big your head is even you might not know the size of your head but god knows the numbers of hair that are there and the size of your head so that it'll fit when you go there it will be a perfect fit i want to tell you i don't think it will be exactly circle because not all of our heads are circular you got to shave all your hair then you'll see all the bumps and the dents that are there and the people ask is anything wrong with your thinking no no it's just my head hair is covering it all right now but if remove it we can see all kinds of things the exact shape i'm sure otherwise it will be very awkward it will be it might fall off and it will be in your nose and constantly you'll be pushing it up or they'll be sitting like a small little thing and that will be also funny he'll put something that will make you look really good you look like a king when you wear that crown of gold hallelujah that's why i saying hold fast to it do not let anyone steal it they can come with various ways and deceive you they can do all kinds of tricks they might try and come directly and try to grab it and run away and there can be some people who can come and say oh wow how nice can i touch it and then you will give it and that's all it's dangerous it's gone forever they can come people can and say oh wow oh you so nice you're so great you're so wonderful and puff you up and fill you up with air and then all the devil needs is a pin to prick you and then you flying away somewhere lost everything faith keep your faith do not let the faith fade away the fifth thing he's saying is I know your works in Revelation chapter 3 verse 8. I know your works. He's saying I know what you have been doing. 
in all your life i know everything you have done your works speak for you your works reveal who you are your works will touch the heart of god when he sees you he's not seeing you right now he's seeing all the things that you've done for him all through your life that is why you got to take up projects for the lord jesus christ you've got to take up things and do it for him what have you done for the lord jesus what are the works you have done if i ask you to write it down come on take a white paper and list out the things i have done for jesus oh i've given my life yes everyone is given the life what have you done you've got to be able to say oh i led this person to the lord i prayed for this neighborhood i went and changed this person's life i'm blessing this person i am doing this in service for the lord i've committed myself to doing this every first sunday 5 o'clock i was there in the faith and prayer drive that is a works that will speak for you one day when he is going to come he is going to see that he says i know your works that is why he's telling see and then he tells all the things that is going to happen so you got to have works in your life the things that are doing for him list it down ask him god what do you want me to do and take it up and do it so that one day your works will speak for you you don't have to pray but your works will pray on your behalf and god will step in and he will come and lead you he'll come and deliver you he'll come and bless you he'll come and do awesome things in your life because your works oh speak out to him not just in this life but in the life to come because there are other churches see they had deceptive works that we saw just now in chapter 3 was 1 he's writing to the church in sardis he's saying i know your works that you have a name that you're alive but you're dead they hollow works they deceptive works they've just got a big empty wonderful looking shining thing outside but you go inside it's just a paper that is covering what is empty inside you've got to have works that will stand the test of fire and the furnace he'll put everything there the chaff and that which is not going to last will be burnt up only silver and only gold will remain that which is done in truth in love to god not which is done with selfish ambition and all kinds of evil reasons all that will completely fade away you've got to connect with god and say oh lord i'm doing this because of my love for you there's a lukewarm work that is there in chapter 3 verse 15 he say i know your works they are neither cold nor hot because you are lukewarm they are just doing it like oh just slowly why you have to shout and talk spending lot of energy all of us sit down and why don't we have to stand and sing why don't we have to shout why do we have to clap our hands let us be just slow let's be casual why take it all seriously come at any time you want 8 o'clock is the service you can just saunter in at 9 o'clock come on relax why are taking it so seriously those are lukewarm works you got to be here even ahead of time so that you can prepare yourself amen god knows your works oh i know your works you come at 9:30 to the church i know your works you sneak out i know your works all the things that you said you will do and you did not do you signed the form but you never turned up all those are the works god sees everything you got to ensure that you make vows to your god and keep it i don't see anybody making vows to god in these days i think it's all forgotten saying god i will do this for you i'll do that for you and write it and say i'm going to do this for god and come and present it and say oh i'm going to do this for god at this time he's done this for me when you do that then you will be rewarded not only do the works speak he's saying that they need to overcome in verse 12 he says he who overcomes you got to be an overcomer in your life you got to conquer in your life you got to know there's a battle that is going on the enemy will come and fight with you it's like a wrestling match in the end only one will win you got to pin him down and sit on top of his head rather put your foot on his head and stand up and you got to be in control you got to be an overcomer in this world or as the world overcome you have they come and they've crushed you with all kinds of things all kinds of pressures they've come and they've taken over your life 
Oh, you're in control. Led here, led there. They dragged you, pulled you, saying, come here, do this, go there, do that. And you're helpless, saying, oh, I don't know what to do. I want to do this for God, but they, this is there, that is there. I cannot come, I cannot do this. Oh, busy, busy, busy. That's a demon called busy that is sitting on the back and driving you in all kinds of places, scurrying around, running around. No time for the Lord, no time for any works to be done for him and then one day when you go to heaven are we going to just stand there just walk around because there is no mansion there because we didn't prepare anything on earth my father used to preach and say oh everyone says oh how wonderful that criminal in the cross at the last minute he was able to get into heaven jesus said you will be with me in paradise but once he goes to heaven is when he'll realize that he has not done anything for jesus he'll be there the last moment of his death there he'll be like crying. That's why he says, he'll wipe every tear from your eye. He'll be like, oh Lord, I wish I'd done something for you. Give me some more, few more days. I'll go and do some good in your name. I'll go and share the good news. I'll go pray for these people. I'll do that. How terrible it'll be. Go there and we've not done anything for the Lord. You use your days that are given. It says in 1 John chapter 2 verse 13, I write to you. He's writing to fathers and then he's writing to young men and he's saying i write to you because you've overcome the wicked one they've overcome the wicked one they overcome the devil they didn't let the devil overcome them with certain temptation or pressures or all kinds of situations in their life and they've given up saying oh oh this is too much for me oh this problem is too much for me people think that their addiction is controlling their life whatever will be the addiction i can tell you that you can overcome it to the power of the holy spirit you cannot come under the power of any. Sin will have no dominion over you. You're not a slave to sin. You have control over your own body and all the members of your body right from the top of the head to the sole of your feet. Control of your mind, control of your hands, control of your mouth, control over your eyes, control even over your ears, what you hear. You will not allow the enemy to use anything that belongs to you to become a snare for you and take you away that's why he's saying i write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one and then again he says in 1 john chapter 2 verse 14 i've written to you young men because you are strong you've got to be strong not physically strong being physically strong is good hope it lasts forever the muscles once you stop exercising will fade away and then they'll slowly become flesh and fat and flab and let me not proceed further about wrinkles and all the other things. Verse 14, he says, because you are strong. When you're strong in the spirit, it does not matter what your age is. You can be looking very feeble on the outside, but you are strong in the spirit. You can command the devil. You can turn the things around in your life. Oh, you can be 120 years, but if you're strong in the spirit, you can do mighty things. You can do marvelous things. You can be a world changer. You can be a history maker. Oh, hallelujah. Strengthen your inner man. Strengthen your spirit man in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he's writing to these young men. You are strong and the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. John the apostle knows about them. The things that they've endured and they did not let those things take control of their life. They overcome, overcame those things and they are now revealing their spiritual strength. Oh, how many here want to be known as a strong person following the Lord no matter what happens in your life? It can be very easily seen. Oh, never straying away through the years I know most a lot of you. Through many situations, through many stages of life. Oh, the time you were born, even before you were born, when your parents were getting married, I know some of you, and then you were born, I know you through the years, and you held on to the Lord. Didn't wander around for five years, and then everyone prayed, and then you came back, even if you did, it's all right. No problem. But some people have been strong. No matter what, rain or shine, storm or calm, they've always followed the Lord. You've got to be such a person. You've got to be seen in the house of God on the day of the Lord. That shows that through the week, whatever the devil threw at you, you didn't let it overcome you and 
you had turned up in faith sometimes it have just crawled in but you still did it amen hallelujah he says again in 1 john chapter 4 verse 4 you are of god little children and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world hallelujah don't be overcome but overcome don't let anything in this world overcome you and the seventh thing he's saying here to hear the holy spirit that is the most important thing in these last days right from the time jesus left earth and went to heaven who's in charge of the people of god and the entire earth it is the holy spirit he is the one who was sent down the holy spirit leads the churches that is why he's telling all the church right at the end till them he spoke to them saying i saw this i am coming i want you to do this i know your works he's talking directly jesus the god is talking to them but at the end in the conclusion he's telling the churches he's telling to this church again in chapter 3 verse 13 what the spirit says to the churches he doesn't say oh he who has a ear let him hear what i am saying to the churches he's already said and it is written but in your present day walk 2000 years after jesus has left we've got to have our ears tuned to the holy spirit so that we can have a victorious life on this day and every day of our life because there can be things that change in the world we will not know what things that happen in the spirit realm you will not be able to see to your natural eyes all you need to do is hear the holy spirit and then you'll be able to walk in that safe path there may be darkness all around but when he says step in oh he will hold you you've got to let the spirit speak and let your ear hear it he who has a ear let him hear you need to develop your spirit ears you've got to tune in to the voice of the holy spirit there are many voices there are evil voices voice of the devil voice of people in your life your own mind talking all kinds of things your own body commanding and telling you to do all kinds of things but which is the voice that you hear you've got to tune your ears you've got to know which is that right heavenly divine channel that you need to plug in oh you need to go right up to heaven there are many people who oh want to get into the prophetic realm and they don't go right up to heaven they're going in between heaven and earth and that is a demonic realm get all kinds of dark things which will look nice but then it will not be from god oh it's a spirit of soothsaying and fortune telling and all kinds of fear and all kinds of confusion you got to be really careful you've got to tune into the holy spirit that is the most important thing that's how he concludes so when you do all these seven things that we can see in this church that jesus says that they are doing and is important and wants them to continue there are seven assurance that he gives he says first i've set an open door he doesn't say it to the other churches they don't have an open door they want to do something but they will be blocked but this church which do does all these seven things who focus on the word of god twice he told them that because you have kept my word because you have followed my teaching because you're doing what i've taught you according to my word the door is open he connects it directly he's saying i know your works i've set before an open door before you and no one can shut it no man can shut it you want an open door that whatever you do may prosper oh you're like a tree planted by the rivers of living water bear its fruit in its season amen blessed at all times though you walk through the valley of baka of dryness through the desert you will make it into pools of water and springs of water oh if you're put in the wilderness there'll be a roadway that'll be made for you so you can walk and comfortably proceed and get out of it because jesus has set he's saying right now there is an open door immediately jump in and get out wherever you want to go no he has set it there permanent fixture they can get out of any situation they can get into any higher level oh they can step up at any time they can walk into the next realm at any time the heaven is open the windows of heaven are open for a blessing to be poured that there will not be room enough to contain oh to divine revelation and knowledge and divine wisdom open door oh let me continue let me not stay there second thing is jesus is saying he will prove his love for you 
he will step into your life if you keep his word and he will prove his love how does he prove his love there are those who torment this church they are those of the synagogue of satan those who will not follow the lord jesus christ but keep to that old tradition they are the jews who come and say who are you what are you following this is not right jesus is not god why are you going after him we are the jews we are the sons of abraham oh we are the pharisees we are the sadducees we are on the right path you are all not doing what is right and all kinds of things and they're coming and talking with them and arguing in them and making their life difficult they're coming and hitting them with their words they're coming them and crushing them and making them get confused with their words and jesus is saying indeed i will make those of the synagogue of satan who say they are jews and are not but lie indeed i will make them come and worship before your feet to know that i have loved you when you keep the word of god your enemies will bite the dust before your feet amen the devil will fall down at your feet he who has been talking and opposing you will come and bow down before you hallelujah why does he do it to know that i have loved you because he loves you he will ensure that all these things take place he doesn't say at this time that because you prayed for this i'll answer your prayer doesn't even reveal here that they prayed for it but jesus wants to prove his love how beautiful is that when god wants to prove his love how many want jesus to prove his love it'll be awesome he'll come and he'll surprise you with a gift unexpected things will fall into your life into your lap wonderful beautiful positive pleasant things you will be oh overtaken by them you will be bubbling over with joy all these wonderful things god will surprise you you get up and there you find this big package all you have to do is every week every day open gifts after gifts and throw the wrappers around and enjoy it you don't even have time to go through all of them yes that will happen if the love of god is being proved to you and that will happen he'll prove your his love for you when he keep his word that is why i'm looking at that what this church got and received the third thing is saying i will keep you from the hour of trial i might focus on this for a long of time of god wills in the coming weeks revelation chapter 3 verse 10 that is what the holy spirit wanted me to focus on but all this that i'm seeing this morning is actually like an introduction to this chapter 3 verse 10 he's saying because you have kept my commandment to persevere i will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole earth to test those who dwell on the earth and that is the time when the antichrist is revealed when the church is taken up he doesn't give this word to any of the other churches he tells only to the church in philadelphia i'll keep you from the hour of trial it means that if he were to come at that time the only church that would be taken up completely is the philadelphia church the others would be they're shaking they're acting like they're alive but they're dead their names are almost going to be erased from the lamb's book of life they're about ready to die he's saying strengthen them they're shaking oh all those who have a christian name all those places which are called as churches oh not all of them will make it out of this earth when jesus comes only those who have the holy spirit and receive him and accept him he who has a ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches Oh is there baptism of the holy spirit in your church do you speak in tongues how many churches can say that 50% 100% and say oh what is all this all this ceased brother that was all there in the first church 2000 years ago then definitely may god help you jesus did not say to the other six churches i will also keep you from the hour of trial it is not just for that specific reason it's not just one instance it's not just a difficult day that they're going to go through and in that day they're going to have an hour of trial no he's saying which shall come upon the whole earth the whole earth is covered by this hour of tribulation to test those who are on the earth all those who say they are the followers of Jesus Christ they've got to prove it give your head and get it beheaded do not receive the mark of the beast and then you will make it to heaven you receive the mark of the anti christ 100% you will not make it to heaven so want to focus on that you've got to be there at the time whenever it is done do not miss it maybe we'll play the christian horror film beheaded 
on a Sunday morning, give some godly fear to some of you and keep you away from that temptation that is trying to pull you away. Those days they'll take us when we were very small and we'll go to that school and have all those eerie trees there. In the evening, Sunday evening, they'll play beheaded and raptured and taken up and screaming, ah! That's how the movie will end. All the different instances of all those who gave their life for the Lord and made it to heaven. But now, haven't seen it in a long time, very lukewarm, very casual, the millennial crowd is not having any courage and strength or do you want to rise up and say, I will be firm and strong in the Lord. There is an hour of trial, you've got to know that. And when you are true to the word of God, you will be kept away from that. And the assured crown is the fourth thing. He's already given it. He's already made it. He's got it for them. That is why he's saying, hold on to what you have. That no one may take your crown. It means that he's already given it to them. There was other instances he's saying, after you overcome, then maybe I'll give you the crown to the other churches. He's not sure that. You should even prepare one and keep it ready. What a waste of gold. Because they are still wavering around. Not deciding. Oh, they are tottering. They cannot decide who is the God and who is the Lord. The fifth thing he says he will do for this churches and all the people who are there is in verse 12. He says, I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more. What a wonderful privilege and an opportunity he's giving them permanent responsibility one second is permanent residency oh many people want to fly here fly there and stay there squat there in that country till PR is obtained <laughs> stay for years and years but there is one place you need to get a PR and that is in heaven he is telling them I will make him a pillar he who overcomes, I'll make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more. Amen. Staying there forever, you don't have to worry. Any day is going to be kicked out, what's going to happen? Am I going to have my name erased from the Lamb's book of life? All that is not going to happen. You're going to be made into a pillar. Someone who supports, someone who has great responsibility. Oh, you'll be there in a prominent position. Each and every one of you need to have that prominent position in the house of God. In the kingdom of God, in the temple of God. You've got to take up a responsibility. God should find you an overcomer. And when he finds that you are an overcomer, he will give you something where you will be able to bless the entire church. And you'll be standing there firm, holding up and being a support and a blessing for all those who can come in and meet up with Jesus Christ. Amen. You've got to be such a person in the house of God. The sixth thing is the permanent residency and seventh is three names written on you. God will write three names on you. First is the name of God the Father. Second, the name of the city to which you belong. And third is, I will write on him in verse 12, my new name. How many got the latest phone? 11 Pro, no one has it. All of you got an old phone. But here, you don't have to use the old name. He says, I'll give you my new name. If you don't get it, you won't even know what it is. You're still using that old name. There's a new name that is there, that has been released. Is it written on you or not is the question. I do not care whether you have the latest gadgets or not, or any of those things. What I'm telling you is trying to make you understand that don't miss out on this new name that will be written on you. The name of God I will write on him. God will write on you. He'll say, come and you'll go and he'll be seated on the throne. You can sit next to him and then he'll look at you and what a wonderful moment when he will write with the finger of God that no one can erase your connection with God, your attachment with God. You can say, my beloved is mine and I am his forever and ever marked. Only few people might understand this, those who might want to take a tattoo and they'll say, oh, I love my wife and got a tattoo here of a name or my husband or the children, one on this left hand, one on the right hand and people do all those things. But here, this is something that God writes on you and you keep it there and it'll mark, it'll be a mark on you, it'll be an 
proof and attestation it's a seal of love for you that is willing to put his name on you you to know that name is a blessing even to know the name of jesus all of you here are blessed in all the earth there are so many people millions of them who do not know the name of jesus if they just knew the name of jesus they would not make it to hell if they just knew the name of jesus they can make it to heaven they can get saved they can get many things happening in their life but they do not know it they've not heard it what a great privilege each and every one of you have oh do not deny that name let us all stand up at this time and look unto god oh thank you jesus oh thank you father for this wonderful time for this wonderful day we surrender our lives to you we want to be like this church in philadelphia that you look at us that we'll be a group of people and a church which keeps your word not be swayed by the evil one but base our life on your word oh pray that you'd be central to our life that all these seven assurances and open doors set ahead would be part of each and every one's life here oh lord Oh, whatever is lacking among these seven things, pray that you will, oh Lord, make it part of this church and make it part of each and every one here. Why don't you all at this time ask God and let him speak to you. Oh, have you strayed away from the word of God? Then base your life on the word of God. Oh, have you felt ashamed of the name of Jesus? Then connect back with that name. Call on that name. Oh, say that name. Oh, confess that name. All these things that we see here. Oh, enduring till the end. Are you shaking and quivering? Oh, are you thinking that, oh, I've come to the end of, oh, my strength. Oh, are you planning to give up? Saying, I do not know how long I'll hold on, how long I'll be able to continue in this. Are you planning to throw it all away and walk away? But I want to encourage you this morning, hold on. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. Do not quit. Do not give up. Oh, God will bless you. God will do all these wonderful things for you. Oh, the trial will pass away. The difficult situation will pass away. You will endure. Oh, the enemy cannot endure. He will not remain forever. Oh, he will leave you. Oh, the storm will pass away. This difficult situation will pass away. These days of darkness will pass away. The light of God will shine. Oh, wonderful, glorious, beautiful days are ahead. Oh, keep pressing on, keep persevering, keep enduring. Oh, speak to each and every one, oh, Holy Spirit of God. Oh, for your God who speaks to the churches, tune each and every one's ear. If that's what you want, oh, ask the Holy Spirit, saying, oh, Holy Spirit, let my ear hear your voice. Oh, speak to me. Oh, speak to me. Open my ears. Oh, let me hear your voice, oh Holy Spirit. Oh, you can place your hands on your ears one year or two and say, as an act of faith, saying, oh Lord, speak to me. I'm, oh Lord, open my ears, are open to you. I want to hear you clearer. Oh, I want to hear your voice. Oh, I want to hear your instructions and your counsel. Oh, even this morning, oh Lord Jesus, even as each and everyone here have committed their lives to following you and as they open their hearts and their ears to you pray that you'll speak to them each and every day for all or do give them specific oh counsel for that moment for that hour oh for that day pray that you will give it to them oh lord let them hear you oh holy spirit and let them have a victorious blessed life oh thank you for all your assurances thank you for all the things you have in store for each and everyone here oh master oh for everyone here oh lord Oh, for you are a God who wants to write and you have written their names in the Lamb's book of life. And you want to keep it there, O oh Lord, forever, O oh Master. That each and every one here would be a pillar in your temple. Oh, and they will not go out anymore. Oh, that they'll have permanent, oh Lord, wonderful responsibilities and permanent residency in your heaven, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I give you all the glory. Give you all the honor. Give you all the power. Give you all the praise. 
Oh, why don't we clap our hands and bless the Lord and thank Him and praise Him. God bless you.